At more than 200 sites throughout Minnesota, watershed professionals are taking the pulse of rivers. They're part of the Watershed Pollutant Load Monitoring Network. This network measures the amount of several pollutants traveling down Minnesota's major rivers and streams. Through intensive monitoring, this network measures and compares regional differences in water quality. The data also help determine long-term water quality trends. This program provides a tutorial on how to use a Van Dorn sampler. Most of the sampling sites in the network use a Van Dorn to collect water samples. And here's some trivia to impress your friends. This equipment is named after Dr. William Van Dorn of the Scripps Institute of Oceanography at the University of California in San Diego. Mike Wallerack is a water monitoring specialist with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. He's on Hawk Creek near Granite Falls to show how to properly take a water sample using a Van Dorn sampler. When taking the water sample using the Van Dorn sample, you want to be sure that the sampler itself is in good working order. Uh, something that you want to keep an eye on is you want to make sure that these hose clamps are tight so it can't jiggle around and loosen up on you while you're taking the sample. Uh, you also want to make sure that your rope right where it goes in to the spring mechanism isn't frayed and you want to make sure your sample is clamped. Uh, the next thing that you do is you open up your trap doors on the side. Okay. Now your sampler is ready to take a water sample. Now we're going to lower the sampler into the water. When lowering it off the bridge, be sure you hold the messenger in your hand. This messenger is what's going to trip the sampler and collect the water. important to give it your three rinses, so that's one rinse, there's two rinses, and that's a third rinse. On the fourth, on the fourth time you want to lower the sampler approximately one foot below the surface and send your messenger down. It can be a little tricky to get your timing down just right, especially if you're in a stream that has pretty heavy flow and your sampler is swinging pretty fast. Once we have the sampler back up on top of the bridge, set it upright, take our bottle, loosen the clamp and get a steady stream of water flowing. Fill your sampler. You want to just make note when you're filling to watch your sampler and make sure that there isn't too much sediment settling out in the sampler itself. There's a few key things to remember when taking a sample using the Van Doren sampler. One is that you do not touch the rubber fill tube to the lip of the bottle when you're taking a sample. Another is in between uh, filling your water bottles, if you're filling more than one bottle, you want to give the sampler a little bit of a shake to agitate the sample. Uh, this will eliminate any of the sediments from settling out on the bottom of your sample, uh, allowing you to get a good representative sample. And the final thing to keep in mind is that if you are taking a sample and you bump the bottom of the river, uh, chances are the river is too shallow to be using the Van Dorn and you might want to consider one of the other uh, water sampling methods. These samples will become part of an extensive database of water quality across Minnesota. Through this network, the MPCA, Metropolitan Council Environmental Services, and local partners collect water quality samples from major rivers. These specialists then compute stream pollutant loads by coupling sampling data with discharge data from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources and United States Geological Survey. This monitoring work is funded by the Clean Water Land and Legacy Amendment. The MPCA coordinates and oversees this network of professionals from state agencies, local governments, and watershed groups.